يا ليتنا إن كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال مولانا الإمام الصادق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه في زيارته الأربعين السلام على ولي الله وحبيبه صدق مولانا الإمام الصادق عليه السلام I respected brothers and sisters in Islam, elders in the community All together I bid you السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته There's no doubt that visiting Imam Al-Hussein عليه السلام could be difficult for some You agree? Therefore, Imams alayhum salam gave us different ways of visiting them which doesn't require an airplane. For example, Ziyaratul Arba'een. This Ziyarah will be the basis of our discussion if Allah gives us life and strength and tawfiq for the upcoming two nights, insha'Allah, where we'll try to look at the Ziyarah of Arba'een and understand what exactly it's all about. Because sometimes, specifically in communities where Arabic is not the native language, right? You'll begin to notice that they will read a dua or they will read a ziyarah, but there is very little knowledge of what exactly they're saying. It becomes more of a robotic, parrot-like activity, unfortunately. More than an act which is a self-transformation, which the dua was aiming to get across, to change you and to change us as humans. Ziyaratul Arba'een was written by our sixth Imam alayhi salam. There is a ziyarah of the day of Arba'een by Jabir, and there is, which Jabir narrates, and there is one by sixth Imam, which is Ziyaratul Arba'een, which we'll be looking at, the one by sixth Imam alayhi salam. Sixth Imam would go to Karbala one day in one of the days of his life with Safwan al Jamal. Safwan al Jamal narrates that sixth Imam Salawatullahi wa salamu alayh narrates the following beginning Assalamu alayka ya waliyillahi wa habibih We want to look at, of course the ziyara is long, maybe three or so pages We're going to take the ones most relevant to our lives insha'Allah because we don't want to take everything, there are details which might not be so relevant to you uh, and mind life, in other words Imam alayhi salam begins, sixth Imam, he visits the Imam alayhi salam, he visits Aba Abdullah and he begins to speak. Nothing prepared, it all comes from his heart. He says, As-salamu alayka ya waliyillahi wa habibih. He begins, peace be upon the wali of Allah and his beloved. What does the sixth Imam salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi mean when he says, As-salamu alayka ya waliyillah. Are you with me? Wali means someone who Allah gives victory. That's what wali means. When Allah gives you victory, you have become a wali. Hence you notice in our shaha, in our adhan or aqama, we say, Ashhadu anna aliyan waliullah, right? We bear witness that Ali is what? The one who Allah gave victory. Wali could be seen as a friend. Ulama have given around 18 different meanings to the word wali. 18. Many of them. This is most relevant to Aba Abdullah, the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to. Okay? He gave Imam al Hussein alayhi salam victory. Wali. Yet this notion of wilaya is a bigger concept which needs to be disintegrated. What do I mean? Wilaya could be seen, its, its importance could be seen in a number of places. Where? Firstly, when you speak about the wilaya of the Imams, we need to take on board that there are different um, kinds of wilaya. Wilaya taqweeniya, wilaya tashri'iya, legislative wilaya, universal wilaya. Yeah, when it comes to the Imams alayhum salam, there's a fundamental point which is the following. There is wilaya, the world of wilaya, there is the world of wilaya, and there is wilaya of the world. What do I mean? When you come to the narrations, they tell you of two different kinds of wilaya. Musa alayhi salam had, for example, the what? He was introduced to the world of wilaya. 
Meaning what? He had, he tapped into somewhat of his abilities to tap into wilaya. Meaning, it was limited. If he wanted to split the sea, he would split the sea, alayhi salam. If uh, Isa, alayhi salam, his wilaya was limited to resurrecting the dead. Makes sense. Who else? Nuh, his wilaya was limited to building a, 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 a what? Building a, 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 a boat or a ship or a safina, whatever you want to call it. It was limited to certain areas. Okay? Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam They didn't have what? They didn't only have the world of wilaya. They had wilaya of the world. It's different. Meaning everything was but a tool in their hands. Alayhum salam If Ali, salamullah alayhi, wanted to rip the door of Khaybar without his hand, he could have. But he did it to give us an example of the strength of a of one who's connected to God, what he can do. Whenever they wanted to turn on the flick or the switch of wilaya, they were able to. I'll give you a simple example to clarify this notion. Seventh Imam was once in the presence of Harun al-Rashid, Harun al-Abbasi, and Harun would tell him, oh seventh Imam, extend your hand for this what? For this piece of bread, okay? Seventh Imam extends his hand for the piece of bread, all of a sudden, he had a magician. He told him, oh, magician, zap the piece of bread. He zaps the piece of bread and the piece of bread is gone. Everyone starts to laugh at seventh imam. Everyone starts to ridicule him. He begins to, they begin to laugh at him. Imam becomes furious. This is a true story. I'm not making stuff up for you. They see a picture of a lion on the wall. Okay. Seventh imam says, lion, come out. People are looking at him. They're like, seventh imam lost it for sure. Something... He ate something before he came. We don't know what happened to the imam. Something is wrong with the imam. Lion comes out. He tells him, oh lion, eat the magician. He goes, he eats the magician. And um, full stomach, lion is happy. He comes to the lion. He tells him, lion. Or lion comes to the imam. Sorry, he tells him, should I eat Harun as well? He told him, no, no, no. Don't eat Harun. Harun is furious. He tells him, give me my magician back. You just ate my magician. He tells him, spit the magician out. He spits the magician out. He comes out in a full, uh, untouched piece, safe and um, sound. Imam was making a point. He was saying, the world is a tool in our hand. We aren't a part of this world. This world is a part of us. Are you with us? This world wasn't created. Hmm? Ahlul Bayt were not created, in other words, to be a part of this world. This world was created simply to be a platform for Ali ibn Abi Talib to walk. Are you with me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein, and upon them he created existence. Hence Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes and says to everything there is a foundation, and the foundation of Islam is love for us Ahlul Bayt. Yes. Meaning, Imam alayhi salam begins by saying, Assalamu alayka ya waliyillah. So that's the first notion to take from wali. What else? And this is an important point. Wilaya is a frame of thinking. How many times have you heard the term wilaya? Wilaya, wilaya, very important. You are wilayati, he's not wilayati. Wilaya is vital, wilaya is this. Po political aspects of wilaya and so on and so forth. You hear the word, it's a very common word today, wilaya. Wilaya, what can we boil it down to to a practical fashion? Because we like to be practical because Islam is practical. Wilaya is a frame of thinking. What do I mean? You notice Yazid came with a certain wilaya. He came with a certain way of doing things, a certain way of legislation, a certain way of thinking. If your leader is Yazid ibn Muawiyah, okay? If your leader is Yazid ibn Muawiyah, you think in a certain way. Are you with me? You think in regards of money, of material, hence when Umar ibn Sa'ad, his frame of thinking was in shaped by who? By Yazid. He would kill Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam, he would then go to who? He would go to Yazid. He would put his hands out, he would say, Imla rikabi fiddhatan aw dhahaba, fa inni qataltu al-sayyidu al-muhadhaba, qataltu khayru al-nas, umman wa aba. He said, oh, oh, oh Umar, no, he would say, oh Yazid, Umar tells him, fill my hands with silver or gold, for I have just killed the good Sayyid. Listen to the lines, Allahu Akbar. 
I killed, look at the, the fool, the idiot. Look what he says. I killed the best of people from his father and his mother's side. He knows he was great. Allahu Akbar. I killed the best of people, fill my hands. That was a Yazidi way of thinking. Wilaya comes and tells you how to think. It tells you how to see things in regards of what? In regards of haq and batil. In regards of black and white, it makes it clear for you. When I have the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen in my heart, it's not only an emotional... Um, uh, nice uh, butterfly feeling in my in my stomach. It's not, that's not all it is. Some to them, that's Ali ibn Abi Talib, that's all it is. A big salawat and I go home. No, that's fantastic, which is great. But that's not all Ali, son of Abu Talib. Ali, son of Abu Talib, is an institution. Yes or no? He's a school. He's an ideology. He's a thought. He's a revolution. He was a walking encyclopedia, walking Quran. That walking Quran, please, let us not limit him to simply a salawat. Even though he deserves a salawat. Sallu ala Muhammad. Therefore, it's a way of thinking. Imam alayhi salam gives us about seven titles. What are we looking at right now? We're analyzing Ziyaratul Arba'een. Today and the upcoming two nights, we want to look at Ziyaratul Arba'een, this fantastic Ziyarah from our sixth Imam. Yet we need to rewind a bit and we see how the Imam begins. He gave one title. He said, Assalamu alaikum ya waliyillah. We just spoke about wali. What does wali mean? Yet the Imam, and we need to move this out of the way, it's better to move out of the way now so that we don't always have to repeat it once it comes up in the ziyarah. So therefore, let's move it. It's a better idea. Imam always begins in many lines, As-salam, okay? Peace be upon. Then he comes with the different titles of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. This notion of peace, let's move out of the way so we don't always have to repeat it. As-salamu ala wali, ala habib, ala sada, qadim al-qada. But first, let's see as-salam. I think it's important. Imam alayhi salam, he first, oh, you find he always repeats this notion of salam. Salam. What is salam? Salam is the greetings of Jannah. You agree? Quran comes and says, لا تسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks in the Holy Quran, he says, Salam is the greetings of Jannah. In Jannah, there's no what's up, there's no howdy, there's no hey, there's no how's it going. You know when certain ahadith come and tell us, always say salam, say salam. Uh, sorry to break it to you, but hey, how's it going, what's up? These don't, these aren't included in the salam. As-salamu alaykum. You know how much ajr you get for initiating salam? 99 parts are for the initiator. One is for the one who replies. SubhanAllah. If we knew the importance of salam, I promise you we would be fighting over who says salam. Responding is good. Yet the one who says it, a hadith come and say, he gets 99 parts of ajr. Allahu Akbar. Salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, ifshu salam. Spread salam wherever you go. Salam alaykum. What a beautiful religion we have. You know why it's important to mention this notion of salam. Because I find it to be very ironic. I'm sure you do as well. Very ironic that the religion, the only religion that encourages you to greet one another by saying peace be upon you is the religion that's claimed to be a religion of terrorism. Allahu Akbar. We're the only religion that encourages you to whenever you see your mom, whenever you see your dad, whenever you see your father, you always should say salamu alaykum. That religion is claimed to be a religion of terrorism. How does that work? Therefore, there are practical applications to this salam. Whenever somebody tells you Islam is a religion of terrorism, tell him, does your religion encourage you to say peace be upon you? What a beautiful greeting. This is known as Tahiyatul Islam. Peace be upon you. Meaning, what is Islam saying? I'm not going to ask you, how are you? Allah could have made our greeting. Yes. He could have made our greeting, Kayf al hal. How are you? In Arabic, how are you? That could have been our greeting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engineered it creatively, Jalla wa ala, to make it in a way where He transcends asking you, how are you? He doesn't care, how are you? He's going to tell you whether you're good or bad. Let me give you peace. Allahu Akbar. Whether you're in a good state or bad, if you're in a good one, let me make it better. If you're in a bad one, let me make it good. Allahu Akbar. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. You know salam is wajib. Our religion teaches us that alaykum is salam is wajib. 
Now, whether you reply in a better way or not, that's a different discussion. But you need to reply at least with the equivalent reply. Yes? If somebody tells you, Assalamu alaikum, it's wajib to say, Alaikum assalam. Mustahab to say, Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa tahayyatuhu and, all, and so on and so forth. In other words, Salam is the greeting of Islam. Then the Imam says, Waliyillah. We discussed Waliyillah until the Imam says, Wa habibih. Peace be upon the Wali of Allah and his beloved, Wa habibih. What does Habibah mean? Habibah is viral. Why? Because he is the beloved of Allah. We, brothers and sisters, we all strive to be what? To make Allah our beloved. Yet yeah, Allah wants Hussein to be his beloved. Allahu Akbar. You and I, we strive to make Allah our beloved. We want to have that tender, intimate relationship with our Lord. At least we're supposed to want to. All of us strive to want to be lovers with God. Allah strives to have Hussein as his beloved. Now, when Allah makes you his beloved, what happens? Everyone that loves him, he loves as well, right? Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn ahabba Allah. Man ahabba? Who? Husayna. Rasulullah used to say, Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. Allah loves the one who loves Husayn. Allah gave everything, everything we see, the millions today who have the tawfiq to be walking towards Karbala. That's all because of the love of Allah for Hussein alayhi salam. Millions walking to his grave. This is Allah returning to Hussein, what Hussein gave to Allah. As we said previously, Hussein gave everything to Allah. Allah therefore gave everything to Hussein. What else? Habibullah. Until he comes to the line and he says, وَجَعَلَهُ what? سَيِّدًا مِنَ السَّادَةِ Ziyarat al-Arba'in continues and he says, He made him a Sayyid from the Sada. You know the hadith of the Holy Prophet of Islam where he says, Al-Hasan wal-Husayn Sayyiday Shababi Ahl al-Jannah. Yes or no? Hasan and Husayn are the princes, a Sayyid, a prince, of the youth of paradise. Grand Sunni scholars came and took this narration to prove that Ahl al-Bayt are better than the previous three caliphs. You know that. They came in and they told them why. They said because Hassan and Hussein are the youths, are the kings of the youths of paradise, the chiefs of the youths of paradise. They said, okay, how does that mean they're better than the previous three? They said, this means they're better than the previous three because of this. Because in Jannah, they're going to be the chiefs of everyone. They said, but, but Umar and so on and so forth, they aren't youth. Yes, they aren't youth. The response came and said, no. Every male, regardless of his age, will be transformed into a youth on the day of judgment. Right? Meaning, he said, he came, the Sunni scholar, he came, he read this hadith, he was, he was, he was, he was taken back, he was baffled, in other words. He said, they're going to be the chiefs of the, of the youths of paradise. He said, fine, that doesn't include A, B, and C. And he said, wait. Everyone is going to be a youth. Therefore, he's the chief of everyone, including A, B, and C. Therefore, if he is their king in Akhirah, then why aren't they their kings in dunya? Allahu Akbar. Yes? Therefore, he came to that conclusion through this hadith. Because Imam Sadiq, through this ziyarah, Imam Sadiq salam comes and says, وَجَعَلَهُ سَيِّدًا مِنَ السَّادَةِ Sixth Imam Salawatullahi wa salamu He says he made him, Allahumma salli ala. He made him a prince from the princes. What else? وَقَائِدًا مِنَ الْقَادَةِ What does he say, salamu alayhi alayhi? He says, and he made him a leader from the leaders. The leadership of Aba Abdullah al-Husayn, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, is a discussion in itself. Yet we'll look at a couple of aspects from it. Because Imam Sadiq says that he has become a leader from the leaders. What kind of leadership did the Imam السلام, have? There's no leadership that can compare to the leadership of Sayyid al-Shuhada. You know why? Firstly, because he was a universal leader. There are some leaders today, he is generous to his people, yet he doesn't care about everyone else. Hitler was what? You can argue he was probably decent to his people, Yet to the ones he didn't like, he, he exterminated them. He didn't care about them. 
Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, if you were to use the analogy, was he universal or use the, the example, was he universal or not? I'll give you this example of John. You know John. John was who? The slave of Abu Dhar al Ghifari, known as Jundub. Abu Dhar al Ghifari, great companion of Ahlul Bayt, had a slave by the name of John. John went to Karbala and he fought with the Imam alayhi salam. He would come to the Imam, he would tell him, Oh Imam, Indeed, my color is black. My smell is detestable. My family were not kind with me. Indeed, I don't have a place to stay, O Imam. Breathe unto me from the breath of Jannah. Yes? Breathe unto me from the breath of Jannah. So my color can be white, my family can be kind, and my lineage can be caring towards me. It is said when John was hit, he was struck on the ground, in his last moments, Imam al Hussein salam, would come to him. He would place his cheek on the cheek of John the African, John the Black, in other words. Today, wallah, it's sad. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I have. You go to certain communities, you see those who are of different color, those who are of different descent, those who are of different nationality are looked down upon. If the community is one which is, for example, Indian or Pakistani or Iraqi, the minute they see an outcast, they look down upon them. Imam Aba Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam, grandson of Rasulullah, Sayyidan min al Sada, Qaidan min al Qada, Hujjatullah fi ardh. Yes? John is dying. Imam comes and places his cheek on the cheek of John. You know, there are some leaders he's lost in his tower. You agree? He's in a different world. He doesn't come down to his people. Yeah? There's some leaders, he doesn't know what in God's name is happening with his people. He's busy, drunk with his power and drunk with his authority. Yes or no? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, look at the humility of Abu Abdullah. He would come down and he would put his cheek. He doesn't need to do that. Arguably, he didn't do it to anyone else, but he's making a point. He would put his cheek on the cheek of John. John would begin to speak. He would say, Man mithli, who is like me? And the cheek of Hussein was placed on my cheek. Allahu Akbar. It is said that when he was dying, his blood would gush from his blessed body, John radiallahu an. Fourth Imam comes in and says the smell of his blood was the smell of oud, the smell of musk. In other words, Imam number one was universal in his leadership. Yes? What else? Imam alayhi salam had unbelievable generosity. Look at the generosity of Abu Abdullah. All aspects of the leadership of Sayyid al-Shuhada. It is said that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam one day would be near Anas ibn Malik, great companion, until one lady would come and she would give Imam a bouquet of flowers. Yes? She would give the Imam a bouquet of flowers. She was a slave. He would tell her, Go, you're free to go. Anas is standing on the side. He's like, Is Imam okay today? What do you mean she's free to go? You just, she gave you a bouquet of flowers. What's the big deal? He would say, oh, Anas, did you hear the verse where Allah says, if somebody tells you salam, then ruddu, like it or better than it? Yes? Do you remember that verse, O oh, Anas? He told me, yes, I do. He said, she gave me salam, the only thing better, or she gave me a bouquet of flowers, the only thing better than it is to let her go as a free woman. Allahu Akbar. Generosity of Aba Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam. In other words, example after example comes and shows the high level leadership of Aba Abdullah, the, in, the knowledge of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. I remember one man, he would come to Aba Abdullah and he would tell him, how are you doing? Yes. If I was to come to you and tell you how's it going, what's your response? Good, alhamdulillah, life is tough, I have a test, max, for example, a few words. Yeah. Imam al Hussein, sallallahu alayhi what was his response? Wallah, this hadith is something else. It shows you the depth of these human beings we die for and we live for and we try to be like. It's not for no reason. Look at the responses. He would tell him, howdy, how, no, howdy, how is it going? He would tell him, I wake up with knowing that Allah is um, above me. Death is seeking me. Hell is beneath me. I'm stuck in the whirlpool of my actions. I can't get what I want. I can't stay away from what I don't want. Allahu Akbar. Until he says, and I know everything I do will be held for accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how he's doing. That's the Alhamdulillah of Abu Abdullah Hussain Alayhi Salaam. In other words, these kinds of notions and these kinds of glimpses and highlights of their life come and show us the kind of leadership that the Imam Alayhi Salaam had. Qa'idan min al qada. Until he continues, he says, وَأَكْرَمْتَهُ بِالشَّهَادَةِ وَطِيبِ الْوِلَادَةِ Sixth Imam alayhi salam says, He says, you honored him with martyrdom and pure progeny. Let's see what the Imam alayhi salam is saying. 
You honored him with martyrdom. There is nothing more honorable in the life of a human being than to die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shahada of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam is important. Why? Because his shahada indeed is what allowed Islam to stay intact. Yes? Until he comes and he says, uh, we'll elaborate upon it in a few lines because there are similar ones like it. Pure progeny. What is pure progeny? Jabir also has a ziyarah. We mentioned previously. Jabir also has a ziyarah of the Imam alayhi salam to which he says, رُضِعْتَ بِثَدْيِ Islam." وَفُطِمْتَ بِالْإِيمَانِ Look at the lines. He tells him, Oh Aba Abdullah, you were suckled through Iman and you were weaned through Islam. Look at the lines. You know you have a mother. She what? She suckles you, then she weans you. As a child, she suckles, then she weans. Who suckled and weaned Aba Abdullah Hussein Salam Allah alayhi? He was suckled by the what? The chest of Iman, Jabir comes and says. And he was weaned by the religion of Islam. Now, what does this mean? Of course, Iman could be referring to Iman as faith in its theoretical sense. And it could also be referring to what? It could be referring to Fatima to Zahra. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha. Bitlib al wilada until a viral line comes and says, Assalamu alayka ya. Khalilillahi wa najibah. This is a vital one. Give me your attention on this vital point. Assalamu alaikum ya Khalilillah. Khalil, we know, was a quantity of which Prophet? Hmm? Help me out here. Which Prophet? Khalil. Ibrahim, salamullahi alayhi. Ahsant. Ibrahim was known as Khalilullah. You recite a ziyarat warith. We say, Assalamu alaikum ya waritha Ibrahim, Khalilillah. Peace be upon you, O the inheritor of Abraham, the friend of God. Khalil comes from Khilla. Khilla means friendship. Ibrahim alayhi salam reached a high stage in his progress towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You come and you notice the hadith. It comes and he says, Inna Allah ittakhadha Ibrahim abdan qabla an ittakhadahu nabiyya. واتخذه نبيا قبل أن اتخذه رسولا واتخذه رسولا قبل أن اتخذه خليلا فلما أصبح خليلا اتخذه إماما Look at the beautiful lines of Rasulullah He says indeed Allah took Abraham as a slave before a prophet A prophet before a messenger What else? A messenger before a khalil and a khalil before an imam Stages of the, of the evolution of Abraham, if you were to call it. Khalil means what? Khalil came right before Imama. Yes? Meaning it's a high stage. It's above Nubuwa, above Rasul, above Abd, above all of that. He was a Khalil of Allah. It's a close, intimate relationship with God. When you are a friend of God, it's a close relationship with Him. In the ziyarah, what do we see, brothers and sisters? We see that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. In Karbala, he reached the state of Khalil. Are you with me? Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, in this ziyarah, firstly, he went from being an inheritor of Abraham to the what? Manifestation of the quality of Abraham. No longer was he, Assalamu alayka ya waritha Ibrahim. Are you with me? No longer was he an inheritor of the Khalil nature of Abraham. No, no, he became a Khalil in Karbala. Assalamu alayka ya Khalil Allah. These are important. Why, brothers and sisters? Because when we open Ziyarat al Arba'in, we need to understand what we're saying, and that's what we're trying to do here. When he says, Assalamu alayka ya Khalil Allah, in Karbala, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam reached the status of Khilla. This is vital. He reached the status of friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what uh, Rasulullah comes and tells Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He tells him, O oh, Hussein, indeed you have high stages waiting for you, yet you have to reach them through shahada. Allahu Akbar. If you were to draw it, 
you draw it in a way where Hussein is standing and Jesus and Mahdi are on the other side. Yet yeah, there's 4,000 arrows between them. Yes or no? He told him there are high stages waiting for you, Ya Aba Abdullah. Yeah, you have to reach it through Shahada. Imam through Shahada reached, he was progressing. What is this lesson for you and I today here, 2015 in Chicago? What is the lesson we can take? We can take the lesson that Imam alayhi salam progressed th towards God. It's a progress. Just like when you go to the gym, year after year, you see your brother, every year, mashallah, he's getting bigger and his arms are widening and his stature is, and his physique are expanding. You tell him, mashallah, you're progressing. What are you trying to do? Then he might, maybe he wants to go and uh, compete, whatever he wants to do, he's progressing physically. Likewise, there's a, there's a spiritual progress within the life of insan. We mentioned Nawafil. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, through Shahada, he was progressing, he reached the peak. Tell me, which human being speaks to Allah when he's in his last moments? Shimr says, I saw the lips of Hussein moving, I came close. What was he saying? He was saying, Ilahi taraktul khalqaturran fi hawaka. وَأَيْتَمْتُ الْعِيَالَ لِكَيْ أَرَاكَ فَلَوْ قَطَّعْتَنِي بِالْحُبِّ إِرْبًا لَمَا مَالَ الْفُؤَادُ إِلَى سِوَاكَ Imam was speaking to Allah in his last moment saying, Oh Allah, I left everything to come and see you. Look at the lines. I orphaned my children to come and see you. If they were to cut me into pieces, my heart would lean towards no one other than you. Allahu Akbar. He's speaking poetry in his last moment. Some people come and say, what's the importance of poetry? It's not important. Don't do it. Imam is showing to us in his last moments. He's, 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 he's spitting rhymes towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. He's writing lines of poetry towards the Lord. Okay. So what you begin to notice is that the Imam alayhi salam khalil. Now, give me your attention here. Imam alayhi salam was progressing towards Allah. Yet also you, when you visit Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, there's also a progress. Give me your attention on this delicate point. Imam alayhi salam, when he's progressing towards the Lord, he's reaching stages higher and higher and higher until he was killed. He was at the epitome. He was at the peak, speaking to Allah in his last moments. He's showing us you need to progress until your end. When you, now that for him, does that apply to us? Yes, this notion applies to us very much so. When you strive towards Allah, or in other words, when you walk towards Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, okay, there are static aspects and there are dynamic aspects. What do I mean? Static in the idea that every year you're gonna have to walk, walk, walk. That aspect of ziyarah is static. You agree? It's not gonna change from now and never change. It's always gonna involve walking. That's static, okay? And then there's a dynamic element, which is what? When you walk towards the Mawla, year after year, there's, you get new vitamins, it changes. What do I mean? One year you might gain awareness. Next year you gain knowledge. Another year you gain what else? Certainty. Another year you learn Amr al-Ma'ruf and Ahiyah al-Munkar. Dynamic, it changes. Yes? It's constantly changing. You can almost see it like this. Between, give me your attention. Between Hussein and Allah, it was Usul al-Din. Okay? Tawheed, he's focusing on God. Nubuwa, he's reaching higher stages. Mi'ad, he's focusing on the Day of Judgment. Between Hussein and Allah, it was Usul al-Din. Between us and Hussein, it's Furu' al-Din. Furu' al-Din are what? Hajj, Amr bin Ma'roof, yes. Muwalat, Bara'a min A'da'illah. What do I mean? Towards Hussein, you are learning, you are gaining Furu' al-Din. Hajj. You may say, what does Hajj have to do with walking towards the Mawla? I'll tell you. Walking towards Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is the juice of Hajj. Hajj. Look, look at the lines. Imam al Hussein, when he left Hajj, Imam didn't leave the Kaaba. The Kaaba left Mecca. Are you with me? Yeah, Ali. When Imam al Hussein alayhi salam left Hajj, he didn't finish his Hajj. History tells us he didn't finish his Hajj. He wasn't leaving the Kaaba. No, the Kaaba was leaving. You may say, how is Hussein a Kaaba? Hadith comes and says of Rasulullah, Aliyun fikum kal Kaabati fil Islam. Ali is like the Kaaba in Islam. You may say, what do you mean? In Hajj, you are surrounding around the static Kaaba. In Karbala, you're visiting the movable, the juice of Kaaba. You know, there was one man, he came to the Imam, he said, I went to Hajj. He said, that's not enough. Go and find Wilaya. Allahu Akbar. 
He said, you want to hajj? That's fantastic. That's half of the equation. Now go and learn about Ali. The juice and the essence and the core of Kaaba. Hmm? In hajj, you throw pebbles at the statue. Yes? In, ha in hajj, in, where, in Karbala, you go and you see the real statue. Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Shimra. You, learn, you see the what? You see what they did to Imam al-Hussein alayhi You see the juice and the real enemy. In hajj, what else? In hajj, you go, you look at the butchered who? The butchered who? Ismail, yeah, was he butchered? No. You go to Karbala, you see the real Dhabih of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Al-Dhabih al-A'wam. Wa fadaynahu bi dhabhin azim. Quran comes and says, We ransomed him with a greater sacrifice. This verse is vital to prove our love for Ahlul Bayt. Until Allah comes and says, Wa alayhi fil akhirin. We delayed it for future generations. In other words, Hajj, its juice is found in. Karbala. Hajj, the shell of it is in Saudi. That's all it is. But the juice is found in Karbala. It's found in the land of Imam al Hussein. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Sallu alam. Ya Ali. So when you're walking towards Aba Abdullah, it's furu' al deen. You're learning of Hajj, Amr bil Ma'roof, Nahi an al Munkar. All of it come into perspective. Therefore, when Imam al-Sadiq comes and says, okay, when he comes and he says, As-salamu alayka ya khalilillah, what is he referring to? He's referring to the high stage and the progress of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Until Imam alayhi salam says, wa akramtahu bishahada, until he comes to the vital lines and he says, As-salamu alayka ya Qatilul Abarat. Qatilul Abarat means what? When you speak of the Imam alayhi salam, he's referred to as Qatilul Abarat. Sixth Imam alayhi salam refers to him as who? The one Asirul Kurubat wa Qatilul Abarat. He is the captive of agony. Look at the lines. And he is the one who was killed and causes the tears to come down. What does that mean? Firstly, he's a captive of agony. Do you know how much psychologically there was an effect on Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam? What he had to see, what he had to go through, there was a psychological effect. But then, number two, you speak a what? Qatil al Abrat. He brings the tears down. This tear is vital. Why? Because some come and claim you Shia always cry, you Shia always weep, it's shirk, it's kufr. The Prophet didn't do it. Did the Prophet do it? Yes, the Prophet did it on many, on many occasions. You have, for example, who? You have, for example, Umm Salama would see Rasulullah crying. She would tell him, why do you cry out Rasulullah? He's a newborn. He would say, yes, he's a newborn. But I see the day where a man would sit on his blessed chest. Yes. Or who else? You have the lady who would see about, who would see Rasul, she would come to him, Umm uh, um Salama, and the likes of Umm Salama, they would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they would, she would be crying, she would be in, in anguish and in, and, in, in high levels of stress. He would tell her, what's the problem? Are you okay? She would say, Ya Rasulullah, I saw a dream. What's the dream? I saw a dream that a piece of you came in my lap. And it hurt me, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah would begin to cry. He would tell her, why do you cry? He, she would ask him, why do you cry? He would say, wait, you'll find the time. It is said, Aba Abdullah al Hussein salamullah alayhi was born. He comes into her lap. He begins to cry. So why do you cry? He says, do you remember that dream? That was a piece of me coming into your lap. That was Aba Abdullah al Hussein salawatullahi wa salam. He says, why do you cry? He says, because this young infant boy, they will kill him. They will trample upon his chest and no one would be there to do matam and aza for him. In other words, crying is something that the Holy Prophet of Islam used to do. Yet there are what? There are realities to these tears. Give me your attention. There is a truth to these tears. There are two kinds of tears, brothers and sisters. There is the emotional tear, and then you have the existential tear. What do I mean? The emotional tear is that you see what the Imam went through, it hurts you, you begin to cry, right? Yet there's a higher level of tears. When you hear the narrations, when, you, when I come across narrations, for example, which come and say that uh, whoever cries a tear the size of the wing of a fly, his, his sins would be exterminated. You stand on the sidelines and you begin to ask yourself, what does this mean? 
the wing, the side, that's all I need to do when I go to Jannah. It's an easy religion. I don't need to pray. I don't need to fast. I don't need to come to mosque. I just pray. I just cry. And I, not only normal tears, the size of the wing of a fly. Very small, right? All I need to do is that and that's it. Jannah is mine. What a beautiful religion. But no, that's not what it is. When the religion comes and encourages you to cry, what's the point to be made? They're trying to tell you when you cry about Al-Abbas for example, you're not only crying about the pain he went through, you're crying about how much this man went through to keep the religion alive. That's why you're crying. You cry about Sayyid al-Shuhada, you say how much did he go through to keep Islam alive. Not only that, you cry about how little you have done in comparison to him to keep this religion alive as well. So boil it down, you're crying about yourself, no one else. You with me? Well, now, you, now when you're crying, tabki, you're crying about your situation. The Imam doesn't need our tears. Let me break it to you. Imam alayhi salam, yes, he's, he's happy when he sees us cry because we have love for him. But is he in debt towards our tears? No, he's not. We need these tears. These tears when the narration come and say, cry the size of a wing of a fly. The, the importance and the emphasis is on what? It's on you. Cry upon yourself. Cry upon your arrogance. Cry upon your jealousy. Cry upon your greed. Yes? Cry upon your hypocrisy. Cry upon how little you have done for this religion. Yes? In other words, Ahlul Bayt want us to change through these tears, through existential tears, not the emotional. You're crying about your existence. You then continue through the ziyarah, in the time that we have, of course, until Imam Sadiq Salamullah leaves this. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. He doesn't speak. Yeah, Ali. He doesn't speak about the salams and the titles of the Imam anymore, which we moved out of the way. He begins to speak about the greatness of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. What does he say? He says, Akramtahu bi shahada wa habautahu bi saada. This is a vital line. You honored him with martyrdom and you blessed him with happiness. What does that mean? Habautahu, in Arabic means habwa, meaning al awaf to give a lot of, to give an um, extravagance of. When I give you a lot of money, I've done habwa to you through money. Okay. Habautahu bi saada. You have just, you, you blessed him, you gave him a generous amount through happiness. You were generous to him through happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was generous to Aba Abdullah al Hussein through a number of things. There are a number of exclusivities that Sayyid al-Shuhada has which no other Imam or Prophet has. For example, Rasulullah comes and says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'ala shifa'a fi turbatih. Are you with me? He gave his turba, he made it a medicine. Okay, The turba of Sayyid al-Shuhada is a medicine. You're not encouraged to put any turba in your mouth except in small amounts, the turba of Sayyid al-Shuhada. It has what? It has shifa'a. Rasulullah says, جَعَلَ الشِّفَاءَ فِي تُرْبَتِهِ There are three things which Hussein has special. Number one, شِفَاءَ فِي تُرْبَتِهِ What else? جَعَلَ الْإِمَامَ What else? مِنْ وُلْدِهِ He made imama come from his lineage. You know when you say, As-salamu ala al-Husayn wa ala tis'ati al-ma'sumina min dhurriyyati al-Husayn. Ali ibn al-Husayn, Muhammad ibn Ali. Min dhurriyya. Imams come from him. Imams come through Hussein. Son of Fatima, through Hussein. Number three is an important one. جَعَلَ اسْتِجَابَةِ الدُّعَاءِ تَحْتَ قُبَّتِهِ Duas are answered under the, the, the dome of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. If you have anything, go under the dome of Sayyid al-Shuhada and raise your hands and ask him, Ya Allah! Rasulullah says, never will your dua be left unanswered. In other words, dua under Hussein's dome is the strongest hot spot. Hmm? You know sometimes when you don't have Wi-Fi, when you have a bad plan, sometimes life is tough, you begin to depend on the Wi-Fi of the restaurant, of the mosque, for example, right? There is no hot spot like Aba Abdullah Hussein's dome. Duha over there, Wi-Fi second to none. Yeah. Instantly, it's answered. What else? More. 
jurisprudential exclusivity. Wherever you travel, for, if it's less than 10 days, and you haven't been there for six months, you need to pray what? Qasr, yeah? Qasr, correct. You pray Qasr. Only when you go to the shrine of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, you have a choice. You know that. You have a choice. You can pray Tamam or you can pray Qasr. It's your choice. You want to pray at four or two, it's your choice. You know why? Because if you go to your nation, if you go to India or Pakistan, you don't pray Qasr, right? Why? Because it's your Watan. Allah is saying Hussein is a Watan for everyone. Allahu Akbar. Hussein is a land, Hussein is a home for every human being. That's the point to be made. Now you want to pray Qasr, you want to pray Tamam, it's your choice because Hussein is a home for the free. If you are free, if you are a truth seeker, then Karbala is your home. What else? A astronomical exclusivity. All of this is what? Akramtahu bi shahada wa habawtahu bi saada. Habwa. Generous. What else did he become generous to Hussein through? On this last note, he was generous to him through an astronomical exclusivity. The, the sky never cried blood except for two. Yahya ibn Zakariya wa Hussein ibn Ali. Number one, Yahya son of Zakir, John the Baptist. And Hussein son of Ali. Today you go to British encyclopedias. Go and search it today if you don't believe me. October 10. October 10. On the 10th of Muharram. Around the year 600. They found that the milk and the cheese in the streets of, British, of Britain. Of the UK for example. In other words. Was mixed with blood. Go and read it. People say, that's, that's unbelievable, we can't believe this. Yes. Allah changed the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing the importance of the death of this human being by allowing the, the sky to cry blood. You know what the hadith say? On the 10th of Muharram, open or move any rock, you see blood coming down, pouring from the rock. Because Hussein was killed. Many exclusivities for Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Yeah, indeed, when you go to Karbala, you see that the Imam alayhi salam also had other exclusivities and he had other abilities and he had other blessings which he poured on his companions and in which he would get rid of the enemies through the head of Abu Abdullah al Hussein would speak. Tell me which head speaks after it was cut off. Yes. Allah is saying this head was so drenched in Quran. Allahu Akbar. It was so drenched in the verses of Allah that even after you cut it, it's going to continue to speak about Ashab al-Kahf. You know Imam Hussain, what he was saying? He was saying, do you think Ashab al-Kahf was amazing? Then look at me. I'm a, I'm a bodiless head speaking about the Quran to you. How amazing do you find that? Yet I say, oh Abba Abdullah, that head you had, Salamullah alayk, it spoke. Yet why didn't it speak? in one situation where it should have spoken to console the little girl who was holding it. Yes. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he had a little six, four-year-old daughter by the name of Ruqayya alayhi salam. Ruqayya, they say, anybody who has a daughter, he knows the special relationship that you have with a daughter. It is said when the Imam would pray, she would place the prayer mat before him. When the Imam would eat, it was Ruqayya who would bring him the food alayhi salam. When the Imam would need something, it was Ruqayya who would speedily run to him, quickly, rapidly, giving him whatever he wants. She loved her father, and how couldn't she when her father was the grandson of Rasulullah? Ruqayya alayhi salam, it is said that she would be taken as a captive, as a prisoner of war to Sham, to where she would reach the bazaar. And she got fed up instantly, it hit her. She said, where is my father Hussein? Where is he? Bring him to me now. It is said that Turqayya alayhi salam would begin to scream, bring me my father, bring me my father. Zainab would try to console her. She would tell her, oh Turqayya, your father ala safar in ba'id. Your father is on a far journey. Don't worry about your father. Indeed, he was very far. Salamullah alayhi. She would tell him, I want my father, I want my father. The ladies, Um Kulthum, Rabab. Um Farwa would hear the shouts of Ruqayya. They would begin to scream and slap their blessed cheeks as well. The voice hears, reaches Yazid alayhi in Allah. He says, what is the problem? Why are they screaming? They would say, there's a little girl who wants Hussein. He said, is that right? He said, take this to her. Allahu Akbar. 
Brothers and sisters, as a, as a four-year-old, if you see your father trip and fall, it hurts, yes? If you see your father what, get into a car accident or if he has stress, it bothers you as a four, six-year-old. What was Ruqayya expecting to see and what kind of a heart can handle what Ruqayya saw? Ruqayya alayhi salam is sitting in the bazaar when she sees two men coming towards her with a tray in their hands. They come to her, she turns to Zainab. She says, Zainab, I didn't request any food. Why are they bringing food to me? Allahu Akbar. Zainab begins to cry because she knows that this isn't food coming towards her. I jarakum Allah. <clears throat> they, place the, they place the tray before Ruqayya alayhi salam. Ruqayya is expecting to see maybe a letter, maybe a message from her father. <clears throat> she moves the cover from the, from the tray and she sees the bloody head of her father, Aba Abdullah wa waylam. It is said that Ruqayya alayhi salam would go down to the blessed head. She begins to speak to him saying, Father, Father, who is there to take care of us after you die? Father, who is there to take care of the orphans? Allahu Akbar. Father, Father, who cut your head? Oh, Abba Abdullah. Innocent questions from Ruqayya. It is said that Zainab would be standing before, beside Zainul Abideen. Imam would tell her, Zainab, irfa'i tifla an ra'si walideen. He told her, Zainab, remove Ruqayya from the head of my father. Why are we mom? Let her relax, let her speak to the head, let her farewell him, smell him, kiss him, speak to him. He would tell her, ya Zainab, laqad matat tifla ala ra'si abika. Allahu Akbar, ajar. He said that Ruqayya has died upon the head of her father, Aba Abdullah. They would move Ruqayya from the head and they find Ruqayya has left the world. They take Ruqayya and it's time to wash her blessed body. Yes, they take the body. One lady is beginning to wash it. She stops washing it. She goes to Zainab. She tells her, Zainab, I can't wash this body. Look at these lines, how much they hurt. She said, I can't wash this this body. Why can't you wash him? Because this body is sick. How do you know it's sick? I see red and blue marks on the body. Ah, Jarakumullah. She, Zainab begins to cry. She says, my master, did I say anything wrong? She said, no. Yet these are marks of sickness. These are the whips of Shimira on her body. Allahu Akbar. Raise your hands, brothers and sisters, through these tears, through the ziyara of Arba'een, through the musibah of Hussein and Ruqayya and Ahl al Hussein. We say, Allahumma shafi kulla marid. Raise your hands, brothers and sisters. Remember us all in your dua and ask Allah to protect the zuwar of Aba Abdullah al Hussein on these nights. The enemies are planning to plant and planning to destroy and planning to stop that which will never stop. Yet yeah, we ask Allah to protect the soldiers and the, and the visitors of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Raise your hands to Allah in dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma shafi kulla mariz. Bihaq marizi karbala zayn al-abideen. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wal-Muslimin. Wakhdul al-Kufra wal-Munafiqeen. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-Faraj ya Allah. And to answer our duas and to hasten the appearance of our Imam. We were saying Surah Al-Fatiha with Allah and Salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.